Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscherini, and for our unit on exploring contact and non-contact forces, today we're going to start looking at magnets. Um, at the end of this lesson, we should be able to explain magnetic attraction and repulsion. We're going to see also the uh, meaning of these two words. Uh, we're going to apply the concept of poles and the laws of attraction and repulsion. And finally, and this is a really important thing when you when you learn science, no, uh, uh, being able to make predictions based on your knowledge of, of the laws of physics, we should be able at this point to make a prediction of the effects of arrangement of magnetic poles. So as you've heard from my introduction, this whole unit is about contact and non-contact forces. And we have explored the concept of force in our first year of physics. So at this point, what I would like you to do is to pause this, this video for a few seconds and just uh, make this journey back with your memory and try to remember everything that you know about forces. What is a force, uh, types of forces, how you can represent them, okay? What, is a, what it could be the effect of a force? All things that we have studied in our first year of classes together. Okay, well done. And even if you don't remember very much, let's go through the basic points, okay? This is just to um, uh, set up the stage for what comes next. Okay, what is a force? What is the definition of force? A force, as you can read here, is a push, a pull, or a turn. And, and this is also very important. It's always applied by one object on another object. It's very important when you describe forces, not only that you say, oh, this type of force and that type of force, it's going this way, that way, but also that who is applying which force on who, okay? And what can a force do? It can change the movement of an object. So for instance, can if you have an object which is not moving, it can put that object in motion. If that object is moving, can stop it or make it go faster, make it go slower. It can also make it change direction, which is again a change of movement, or it can change the shape of an object. Think about when you uh, squeeze a sponge or when you pull a rubber band. Those are all examples of change of shape very simple examples of forces that you can uh, apply in your daily life is pushing open a door lifting a pen bending a ruler hopefully without breaking etc but today we're going to talk about magnets and we're going to talk about the force that magnets apply or not to other objects now this is something i usually do with my students in class I give them some magnets like this bar magnet over here, okay? And first of all, I tell them, look, uh, every magnet has two sides, two, sorry, two ends. We call those ends the North Pole or North Seeking Pole and the South Pole, okay? Uh, they're usually labeled either by letters or by a color code. In this case, the North Pole is marked by a white dot. Okay, so this, will, this end will be the North Pole and this end will be the South Pole. This shape is what we call a bar magnet. We're going to see also today other shapes of magnets, okay? And what I usually ask them is just to take their pencil case. So just, this is my pencil case and not surprisingly, it has bicycles on it. And just take some objects out of that pencil case and see what happens if you put the magnet next to them. For instance, if you take um, a rubber band, and let me just make this bigger so you can see it better. So if I take a rubber band, um, um, sorry, uh, an eraser, nothing happens. If I take these um, post-its, nothing happens, okay? If I take this pencil, hmm, also, oh yeah, something is happening, sticking a little bit. As you can see, okay, to this part, not to this one, okay? Keep this in mind because both of these parts are metal, but this one sticks, okay? All right, then I can try it with these pencils, but again, nothing happens. And finally, another metal pencil. And also here, this part here attaches. 
okay and you can if you look enough you, you you should be able to find some magnets at home for instance if you have a fridge magnet or um, some cases for smartphones the, the closing part has magnets or not super strong magnets but still you can play around with those and see and try it by yourself okay so what did we learn from this very simple experiment first of all that a magnet so like again like this bar magnet exerts exert is a, a very fancy word that says that means apply okay so a magnet applies what we call a known contact force on magnetic materials and more of that in a second okay so non-contact you might think oh mister but the the magnet was touching the object so let, let's go back to a full screen view of myself okay so what i have now it's again my magnet and a pin i hope you can see it and what i will do i will you see these are at a distance and i will drop a pin and the pin attaches okay and and this this happens because the magnet is applying a force around itself so not you don't have to touch a magnet to feel the force of a magnet again you can try this by just putting the magnet on a desk the object nearby and just bringing the object close and close until the the pin in this case attaches to the magnet now we also saw that not everything is attracted by a magnet i mean some of those uh, were pretty obvious you were not expecting um uh, a rubber uh, an eraser to be attracted by a magnet you wouldn't expect a pencil to be attracted by a magnet but we also saw that some metal objects were not attracted by the magnet and that it might come as a surprise because we tend to equate metals with magnets actually uh we know that very few metals um are influenced by magnets actually if we narrow it down only three uh, metallic elements so of all the elements in the periodic table are attracted to magnets and these are iron cobalt and nickel and plus uh, most of the alloys of iron like steel steel is a very common material so this is why we're quoting this now these three iron cobalt nickel are like our three really important metals although cobalt is very rare so in real life probably you won't uh, you will not come across cobalt but nickel nickel is very common um, um a lot of coins are made of nickel and iron is basically everywhere so one thing is if you have a magnet and some random objects well, but what if you have two magnets together okay and as you can see in this diagram i'm showing you the three possible ways you can combine two magnet you can bring two magnets together so for instance if you have the south pole of one magnet and the north pole of another magnet or two north poles of two different magnets or two south poles of two different magnets and instead of telling you what happens although probably most of you already know it let's make this bigger again and let's look at this strange contraption you see over here so right now what i made i have enough the same bar magnet as before i made a, a sort of a stirrup okay and i'm hanging this so this is free to move um, this setup is more convenient than just putting the magnet on a table because on the table the magnet will not be as free to move because of friction with the table surface now if you do this at home again you should wait a little bit for this to stabilize and what will happen is that usually this magnet will not go in a random direction it will at some point will point in a direction but more of that in the next lesson so and you don't see it from where you are but the end which is closer to me so this end is the north pole okay so I'm taking my other bar magnet, okay? And you see, this is the North Pole, so I will flip it around. So this is the South Pole, and now I'm going to bring the South Pole of this magnet closer to the North Pole of this magnet. Let's see what happens.
Okay, let's see it once more. Let's stabilize this a little bit. You have to be very careful because um, the material with which these bar magnets are made is quite brittle. If it falls on a hard surface, it can chip away. You can see it also. Let's see if you can. Uh, 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 there you go. Okay, you can see it's already a bit chipped. So again, North Pole and uh, South Pole. Okay, so and I bring it closer slowly slowly and you can see also already the effect okay so north pole and south pole well i will not comment you you you, you come out with your own conclusions okay so now i'm going to do the opposite this is still the north pole and now uh let's see uh, there you go this is the north pole and now i'm going to bring this one closer oh and it, as you can see uh, it starts spinning because, well, let's see if you can make your own conclusion. But let's see, this is North Pole and North Pole again. Uh, and it spins around. And what happens, it spins. So, And you can see it very, close, very clearly. The North Pole and the South Pole got attacked to get, attached together. And we can do the same with two South Poles. Now we have two South Poles. And you can see it because of a white dot. And let's see, oh, it spun again. And again, we have the two opposite poles attacking together. All right. So let's recap what we have just discovered. So if we have a south pole of one magnet getting closer to the north pole of another magnet, what they'll feel, they'll feel pulled towards each other. So I will draw, as you can see here, a force from here and an equal but opposite force from here. On the other hand, if we have two north poles, what happens, this will try to be pushed away. So I will draw an arrow like this and an arrow like this. And the same goes if we have two south poles. So we can say if we have a north pole and a south pole, they get attracted. If we have two north poles, they get repelled. And if we got two south poles, they get repelled as well. Even better, at this point, we can summarize our findings about the uh, relative behavior of two magnets by stating a very simple law. No? Opposite poles will attract. Opposite means a north pole and a south pole. Same poles will repel. This is really important and we will find a very similar law when we're going to talk about static electricity. In the second part of this video we're going to see a very very nice application of the fact that equal poles repel. But for today that's all from Mr. Boscarini. Goodbye.